all these colors, motions, and patterns. Nature truly is one great catwalk. But let's assume that this beauty wasn't just created for our enjoyment. What could its purpose possibly be? So, is the purpose a biological one? Or is it a luxury that animals too can indulge in? Something that makes their lives more comfortable, just like ours? I can die Welt nicht ohne Schönheit mir vorstellen. The idea that nature is practical is really uh, uh, a misnomer. So, do animals themselves experience beauty without any purpose? Let's assume animals perceive something as beautiful. How does it work? Does a cow think, I like this landscape, this flower looks gorgeous, or these horns are superb? Schönheit kann man ja auch übersetzen mit Attraktivität. Also werden sie angezogen durch ein bestimmtes ästhetisches Merkmal. Auf jeden Fall ist es so, dass diese ästhetischen Merkmale, zu denen die Schönheit gehört, unbedingt von einem anderen Individuum, meistens der gleichen Art, auch wahrgenommen werden muss. Animals react to beauty. It's like an irresistible magnet that draws others towards it, even other species. The beauty of flowers, for example, attracts bees, butterflies and other insects. But what is beautiful to some may repel to others. Peacocks use their showy plumage to woo females, while also deterring possible predators. The eye spots are a signal. Buzz off. There's a lot of me, and I'm dangerous. But this doesn't always work. Says coyotes are killing their beloved peacocks. As CBS 47 News reporters explain, in the U.S. city of Fernandina Beach, coyotes kill peacocks. Speaking of peacocks, these two peacock spiders are communicating, and it's all about one thing: procreation. But is that always the sole purpose of beauty? Die Schönheit kommt von innen. Kein Weibchen, wenn es zu den Organismen zählt, die wählen können, weiß ja, was gute Gene sind. Das heißt, es werden Stellvertreter, Indikatoren gewertet, die verbunden sind mit genetischer Fitness. Und dazu gehört eben, wenn die Weibchen wählen, der Test der Leistungsfähigkeit der Männchen. Our beautiful songs, elegant dances and sublime plumage, nothing but signals telling the female, pick me, I'll give you healthy offspring. Is beauty ultimately only about survival? The beautiful ones win the competition and the ugly ones disappear from the gene pool. No, uh, beauty happens. Most evolutionary biologists today uh, think that beauty in the natural world is like a rainbow uh, and that the benefit of that beauty is like a pot of gold lying at the end of the rainbow, right? Uh, that the leprechauns promise that at the end of the rainbow is unimaginable wealth and benefit. But the Darwinian idea is that the beauty of the rainbow is just the rainbow. Hold up, wasn't Charles Darwin all about survival? And shouldn't beauty consequently only serve this one purpose? In a letter to botanist Azza Gray, he complains about stomach aches he suffered at the sight of a magnificent peacock's tail, because it doesn't make sense in his theory of evolution. He finds the animal's ornaments rather impractical. 
sehr auffallende Vögel werden natürlich auch sehr schnell von anderen, von Räubern entdeckt und gefangen. Und die müssen dann entweder sehr gut fliegen können oder sie müssen sich doll verstecken können. If animals can be so beautiful that their beauty endangers them, then what's the point? Why have beauty if, besides the pros, there are also cons? Of course, beauty isn't always dangerous. It is, however, why Darwin arrived at a revolutionary revelation. Darwin didn't merely concede that animals had a sense of beauty, but that they had the ability to choose this purposeless beauty and pass it on to future generations. This prompted him in 1871 to publish a theory stating that partner selections play a decisive role in evolution, and that it is frequently the females who select their partner. The so-called female choice. Scandalous for its time. It was bad enough that, according to Darwin, females had any sort of say in the animal kingdom, but to suggest that they played a decisive role in the preservation and development of a species? But his idea that mate choice, in particular female choice, was a force in the natural world, was a big loser. <laughs> no one adopted it. And actually, it kind of went underground for uh, uh, over 100 years. Wir Menschen unter uns haben unsere Ideen von Geschlechtsrollen dann verändert über die Zeit und das hat auch dann geholfen in der Wissenschaft. Darwin didn't just cause a scandal with his female choice theory, but also by attributing to animals what were previously thought of as purely human abilities, such as the abilities to appreciate beauty and make individual choices. Darwin used the language of everyday human artistic experience, uh, looking at art, regarding art, enjoying music, in his description of the lives, the sex lives of animals, right? Uh, this was radical in the, at its time, uh, but it still has a, a radical impact on science itself today, right? That, um, that subjective experience should be a, a force in nature. But how can we find out whether animals truly do have a subjective experience of beauty? Maybe the Barbary doves can help us. They are tame and display rather telling courtship behavior. Es geht wirklich darum, die Frage zu beantworten, ob Ästhetik was nur Menschliches ist. Wir haben in einer Studie so eine Art Speed Dating gemacht mit den Lachtauben. Männchen und Weibchen haben sich dann kennengelernt in unserem Experimentaufbau und wir haben deren Verhalten aufgenommen. The speed dating experiment helps to better understand the Barbary dove's behavior. The same female Barbary doves are then used in another experiment, a sort of peep show. Während die Weibchen das Kino ansehen, während sie im Kino sitzen, nehmen wir Video- und Tonaufnahmen. Und dann sind wir sehr interessiert, wie verhält sich dann das Weibchen. Zum Beispiel, wenn sie auf einmal anfängt, die Feder zu putzen. Oder zum Beispiel, dass sie ihr Schwanzfedern dann ganz, ganz leicht und schnell vibriert. Wir wollen wirklich messen, wie viel Interesse sie zeigt, damit wir am Ende mit Zahlen rauskommen, die wir analysieren können. The findings of this experiment sound conspicuously human. For one thing, the Barbary doves react variably. They display individual tastes. And for another thing, it takes time. Balz ist nicht nur ein Einwegding, sondern es ist so, das Männchen macht sein Balz, das Weibchen reagiert und wenn das Männchen das dann wahrnimmt und darauf auch reagiert, dann kann es besser weitergehen. Empathy goes down well with the doves as well then. But can we extrapolate a sense of beauty from their level of arousal? Wir finden, dass es viel mehr 
wahrscheinlich, dass für das Weibchen dieses subjektive Evaluierungsprozess eher holistisch ist. This means that it's the overall impression that generates this feeling of wow, he or she is really beautiful. Because beauty is made up of many small parts, be they gestures, sounds, looks, smells or dances. Und um von dieser Liste von Eigenschaften zu diesem Eindruck zu kommen, schön, nicht schön, weniger schön, mehr schön, also das ist, woran wir uns sehr interessieren. The more complex those rituals, the more distinct the animal's sense of beauty. In some of these avian displays, especially uh, in polygynous birds, are, are almost like high opera. They've got song and dance and costumes. <laughs> Such as the bowerbirds, who become veritable artists in order to impress females. Their bower may look like a nest, but in reality, it's a theater of seduction with a single box seat for the female. The bower shows us something fascinating, which is not only is it beautiful, uh, but the architecture provides females with an additional feature. If the male uh, wants to copulate, he has to come back around the walls to approach the female, which gives the female the chance to pop out the front of the bower if she doesn't like the way things are headed. This is the evolution of sexual autonomy. And then lastly, we have to ask, what do females do with their freedom of choice? And the answer is, they choose beauty. And this inspires the bowerbirds to outdo one another, like in an artistic competition. The satin bowerbird, for example, collects blue objects, such as fruit or waste plastic. And the great gray bowerbird uses an optical illusion. He lays out his collectibles so as to leave the smaller stones and shells close to the bower's entrance and the bigger ones further away. This makes the male appear closer, bigger and more impressive to the female in her box seat. Isn't that just the true art of seduction? And a testament to a particular taste? The co-evolution between uh, taste and art uh, that is really at the heart of what drives aesthetic process in the natural world and also in the human world. Beauty isn't static, it changes with evolution. And this is neither a coincidence nor due to the environment. The animals themselves are responsible for these developments. Their preferences, fashions and trends change what is beautiful. The diversity and the beauty of nature demand that we recognize the subjectivity and the independent free choices of animals. Okay, animals can perceive their own beauty and also influence it. But let's be honest, how much power do they truly have? Even if flamingos were to prefer blue feathers, they would still be pink wouldn't they? Doesn't this lead back to the idea that beauty in the animal kingdom is predominantly down to the environment and natural selection? Nun, die Farben sind Stoffwechselprodukte. Sie stammen von den Grundstoffen her betrachtet aus der Nahrung. Wo es wenig Farbiges in der Nahrung gibt, lässt sich hinterher auch nicht sehr viel Farbe fabrizieren. Do these birds eat very colorful fruit then? In den Früchten stecken die Vorstufen oder ganz direkt die Farben, die dann ins Gefieder gehen. Das heißt, hier ist es das Angebot und sind es die thermischen Rahmenbedingungen der Tropen, die diese Gunst erzeugen, mit denen die Vogelwelt weit mehr als die Säugetiere anstellen können. As individual as the sense of beauty is, beauty itself is not entirely decided by the beautiful creatures themselves. The imposing antlers of stags, for example, are due to minerals in the forest floors. The color of flamingos comes from the crayfish they eat. There is something else that influences beauty, which explains why beauty is so unevenly distributed between the sexes. 
So why is it that males are often so impressively decked out, while the females are grey and drab? Sie ist dann ungleich verteilt, wenn beide Geschlechter sehr unterschiedlich zur Fortpflanzung beitragen. Die Hirschkuh produziert ein Kalb in einer Saison. Das stellt eine enorme Belastung dar für den Stoffwechsel, für den Nährstoffhaushalt. Diese Belastung hat der Hirsch nicht, scheinbar. Aber er entwickelt ein Geweih, das in der Menge der Knochensubstanz, Hirschgeweih sind Knochengebilde, dem Knochenskelett des Hirschkalbs entspricht. Und in der Bilanz sind sie beide in etwa auf gleich rausgekommen. This seems to be an unfair deal. The mobile male invests in bling and the sedentary, rather immobile female is left to deal with rearing the young. In that situation, it's obviously better not to draw attention and become easy prey for predators. As it happens, this is why mandarin duck tricks, who share responsibility for the brood, wear camouflage rather than flamboyant plumage while rearing. The entscheidende Richter über alle Vorgänge, die mit der Fortpflanzung verbunden sind, ist der Fortpflanzungserfolg. Und an dieser knallharten Selektion kommt kein Organismus vorbei. Clearly, organisms must be able to afford their beauty. But does beauty only exist in circumstances where it poses no disadvantage or threat to the animals? Is it essentially a freak of nature that happens once in a while at random? How does beauty develop and change genetically? Die Variationen in der Natur kommen dadurch zustande, dass es zufällige Änderungen in der, in der DNA, in dem genetischen Material gibt. Und zwar durch kosmische Strahlung gibt es immer mal wieder Fehler beim Ablesen und dadurch kleine, kleine Änderungen, von denen die meisten neutral sind, das heißt sich nicht auswirken auf das Erscheinungsbild des Organismus, aber manchmal schon doch und das ist rein zufällig. Accidental variation is a natural component of evolution. It means any descendants will have minor distinctive markers. In the end, the survivors are those who are best equipped to stand up to exterior stresses. More specifically. Bei der sexuellen Selektion reagieren sie auf, auf Geschlechtspartner. Und da können sich dann auch Unterschiede ergeben. Nicht immer, die werden natürlich nicht immer schöner, die werden anders erstmal. Und dann kann sich, können sich neue Formen ausbilden, weil die zum Beispiel beliebter sind. Whether features of beauty endure depends on whether they become a trend and thus spread. A bit like the fashion industry and pop culture. But how does hype like that work in the animal kingdom? The indirect benefit of, of mate choice is, is similar to an irrationally exuberant uh, stock market bubble. When a lot of people buy shares, there is appreciation of value. If this leads to more and more buying, the shares will eventually be so expensive that they are no longer proportionate to the business's real value. If beauty in nature functions like the stock market, can a beauty hype burst like a speculation bubble? Well, one of the most radical things that beauty can do in the natural world is actually to cause problems, <laughs> to become a hindrance to survival and fecundity. Among club-winged mannequins, males who can generate a particularly powerful chirping noise by shaking their wings are considered fashionable by females. This has caused an evolutionary change in the species' muscular system and bone structure. The mannequin's owner, which for every other bird species has been hollow for 150 million years, has tripled and quadrupled in size and solidified. While they can now make cool sounds with their wings, flying is becoming increasingly difficult, and not just for the males. And that is because in birds, the bones develop in the egg before the embryo has become either male or female. 
So slowly, over generations, as the wing song has evolved to become more elaborate, the female wing bones have gotten worse and worse and worse. And the result is what I call the evolution of decadence. And in theory, there's nothing to prevent this entire process uh, from leading to extinction of the species, right? Nature, then, also has fashion victims, species who have taken the game of beauty so far that it might cost them their existence. But how would they know that this beauty could be so destructive in the long term? And even if they knew, would they forego it? Beauty seems to defy the norms of this world, which can sometimes seem so brutal and perpetually purpose-driven. Its sole use isn't limited to sexual procreation. It is also an expression of individual pleasure, a pleasure that pushes the boundaries of natural selection. But can't this be done in a less vital and more species-preserving manner? Maybe with jewelry? It is so that there are keine, keine Tiere gibt, die, die sich irgendwie mit künstlichen Attributen zusätzlich schön machen. But what about these guys? There are countless videos on YouTube of parrots preening themselves with paper. At least, that's what they appear to be doing. But appearances can be deceiving. Those parrots aren't adorning themselves with paper plumes, but rather collecting the material for nesting purposes. They only pop the strips into their feathers for transport. No adornments here either, then. And yet, there are always other possible examples. Even if only through our human eyes. Such as... Julie the chimpanzee. She caused a veritable frenzy in a national park in Zambia with her ear decorations. After she had been wearing them for a while, others began to deck themselves out too. And the bottlenose dolphins, who drape seaweed across their dorsal fins to set themselves apart from other dolphins. There definitely appear to be similarities between us and animals. Even if the study of beauty is still in its infancy, we know humans don't have the monopoly when it comes to experiencing beauty. And just as each of us has their own taste, animals too have a sense of who's beautiful and who isn't. <laughs>